Myself was a typical Muslim society, mom, five time prayers. So his side is pure Hinduism. Thank God we are in Singapore. So we know that we can have a civil marriage. Hi, should I call you? Yes, okay. So, tim kita ada hantar kajian tentang perkahwinan di Singapura. I think it's going to be very useful for this episode. Oh, so topik kita kali ini pasal kan kahwin? Betul, topik kahwin. Tapi perkahwinan sibuk. Islam ah. Menangis tu kan pakai syariah. Ini sivil ni ikut ugam, apa negeri punya. Dalam negeri kira sah lah. Dalam agama tak, tak sah. Kita nak kembangkan kita punya keturunan zuriat dalam uh, konteks Islam. Agama Islam kan orang kena masuk Islam. Which is actually a must. Outcome dia tu macam mana? Kalau dia kahwin macam ni, then dia punya keturunan tu macam mana? Cinta tu buta betul? Baru-baru hmm. sayang go go go. Nah. Kalau ada konflik, then how? where they want to turn to. Okay. Um, sebagai orang Islam, kita dibesarkan dan um, dipesan untuk memastikan yang pasangan kita juga merupakan orang Islam. Tapi sebenarnya saya rasa simpati sebab mungkin ada di antara mereka juga yang tak dapatkan restu ataupun sokongan daripada keluarga. Ataupun mungkin pemahaman mereka itu kurang. Kenapa? mereka harus berkahwin mengikut cara yang betul. Jadi saya nak tahu, mungkin ada sebab-sebab lain kenapa mereka tidak ingin memeluk Islam sebelum berkahwin. Tell us a little bit about your background, like what was your household typically like when you guys grew up? Of course, myself was a typical Muslim society, mom, five time prayers. So his side is Pure Hinduism. Uh, I grew up in grandma's house. It was a big family. So we would sleep outside. My grandma would be inside the uh, room. Childhood was fantastic. Growing up in grandma's house with cousins are beautiful. Of course. And when it comes to Ramadan, my goodness. Hey, it was lovely. It was lovely. You are bringing back all my memories. Yeah, it, it, was, it was beautiful. That's how I can say. Because I enjoyed my childhood and I used to be a very religious person. I used to pray five times a day and of course Tosa. And then I used to go for my religious class at my grandma's place a few blocks away every Sunday. 1.30 to 2. Yeah. One part of my life it was my journey was that but my really took off my journey took off to another level after I met him. It was it was a very different life. No like never a bad influence. It's been a very a beautiful life of my my journey you know he re, he have showed me a different how we have to live our life normally without any restriction it's like i was respected i was given the respect i was given you're allowed to make choices it's okay to make a mistake nobody is going to scrutinize you nobody is going to tell you hey what are you doing in my family i always have this problem it's like what are you doing this is wrong. You cannot do this. Why are you wearing this? Why is this? Why is that? It's always a no, 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 no. But it's, it's, it's sad that it didn't come through my mom, you know. But then this extended family. Too much of restriction. I'm, I'm not against the restriction, but then I just feel so trapped. That's all. So when you talk about restrictions, is there anything under the Islamic law that you don't particularly like? Actually, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to mention that it has got nothing to do with the Islamic law. No such thing as Islamic laws don't allow you to do this, do that. No. It's a human being law. It's a human beings who have so much of restriction where they force you just because it's what they think, what they have practiced in their life, they put it against me, like my generation. So, Joe, 
as you know, Muslim marriages are only recognized between a bride and a groom who are both Muslims. So did you consider con converting at all? Even if the opportunity came about, honestly, I wouldn't have because I love food too much to give up. And even in my own religion, I don't practice so much, you know. I go to the temples maybe once a year, and that is only because my family holds a function at the temple once a year. Actually, it's not only food, it's just I am a free thinker, basically. How did you decide to have a civil marriage? Thank God we are in Singapore. So we know that we can have a civil marriage. There was no persuasion of me having to convert to Hinduism. In that sense, he was pretty open about it. So we agreed on the civil marriage. So at the point when you were registering for your marriage, did they ask you anything with regards? We had a fantastic solemnizer. As an old lady, 60-year-old yeah, lady. She, she actually she wanted is, to interview yeah. us before she agreed to becoming our yeah. solemnizer. So she actually called us out for a cup of coffee. Yeah. And then she sat down and she spoke to us. She did ask, you know, me coming from Hindu, she coming from a Muslim, would there be any interest or conflict and all that? Yeah, because uh, very important is who's going to witness the family. So when she realized that my mom and dad and his mom and dad were there, it was all clear. Our solemnization was pretty simple. It was a restaurant. My family, my sisters, her in-laws. Just the immediate family. That was for the ROM. Uh, the traditional wedding was, uh, was uh, that was huge. It was, it was held at Tangro Temple and our, I think our invitees were a thousand people. Wow. Yes. When you wanted to tell your family that you want to get married and have a civil marriage before that, were you, did you have like any, any type of fear or you were just very open about it to your mum? Definitely I was very open because I think in that sense mum and dad were super open they they always believe in you need to have believe what you want so there was never opposition from their side as long i'm happy and we are happy she was definitely more than happy so how did your family take it when you decided to have a civil marriage did they say anything maybe your relatives uh, my uncles auntie so of course they didn't say it to me but i think everything my poor mother la. they didn't call to ask a question <laughs> they called to scold her it's like, how can this happen? How could you do this? What have you done? So, you know, with this kind of very vulgar words, you know, very wrongly words we use. Like. It's actually, of course, it do affect me. When she said she's going to get uh, married with my, uh, her fiancé, then I told her her blessing. I mean, I given my blessing. I said, can go ahead. I'm thinking, as long as my children happy for me now, that's the only thing. Uh, other than that, nothing. Do you have any regrets about all these things? Oh, no, dear. No. Basically, it's just my uncle. He has always been the very staunch, you know, the religious person in the family. It's gone to Umrah, Hajj, you know. And after they go there and when they come back, they think that they are the high priest. Okay, so it's like when it comes to family things, they are like, everything is them. Sometimes they think that they are God, you know. So there were times that he actually even mentioned from Quran words, it's like haram, I shouldn't get married. It's like I'm very, I'm extremely sin. I can get married, provided he has to convert. Ah, uh, okay. He cannot let go that I am giving up my religion. I'm not giving up my religion. My religion, I am still Islam up to this day. I have not given up my religion. Okay, to give up my religion is something that I have to truly tell myself and say, that's it. It's, I'm done with Islam. Because I am born with that religion. If I have to give that up, there are certain things that's also sensitive to me. But it's a pity that he never understood that, you know. Did he give you a straight no or he did advise you on certain things and then, you know, discuss with you? Or it was just a straight no? It has always been a no. And I always believe it's going to be a no because he has no answer for any of that comments that he gave. Because he really do not know what he was talking. So when he say it's a, it's a statement, it's like he was just condemning me. But he was never able to give me an answer or a proper... Nothing. Nobody gave any explanation. 
nothing nobody said anything nobody sat down with me explain what is the right what is the wrong nothing nothing was said okay joe so if someone would actually sit you down and explain things to you would you have changed your mind still i think i wouldn't have my background i was exposed to many religions and i was never even tied down to my own religion so even if someone had actually explained to me that what i was uh, trying to make her do or getting married to her in civil in a civil way uh, was wrong i would have still turned around and asked her you know are you uncomfortable or are you comfortable with getting married to me only me not the religion we actually had a sit, a sit down with my parents and i told them that you know getting married it's not about the religion i'm going to get married because you know about how, how i feel for her and how she feels for me so uh even getting her to convert to hinduism or asking her to son i'm against that yeah. i will just leave her alone if she wants to practice islam let her peace yeah i think with the parents it has always been they yeah. have always been worried <laughs> when he will convert i guess marrying for the religion is a very bad uh, concept of getting into a marriage yeah. marrying to the person that you love regardless of the race would be a better choice to jump into a marriage yeah basically it's all about understanding it's give and take i can have two of the same religion people getting married but if they don't understand each other well enough to adapt to each other's like lifestyle like waking up in the morning and some of them don't do their bits you know some of them just drink a cup of coffee and leave it to the sink expecting their partner to wash all this is all adapting to one another's lifestyle i think in terms of marriage communication is the key word to a basic successful marriage he is someone who has always practiced good communication skill we always talk anything good bad you know negative positive everything we just talk it can be over a cup of coffee of course it is definitely a culture different for me because um you know being married into the in-laws there were a lot of tradition that i had to follow so everything along the way i learned mm -hmm. mother-in-law was pretty patient as well so everything has up to today we talk about it the same thing goes to the kids we sit down we have breakfast we talk even though if it's a boring topic for us as parents as long as they are talking we listen Kalau nanti perceraian buat apa perceraian terjadi kan banyak masalah ni. Berarti kalau kahwin civil ni, kalau dah kahwin nanti anak dia nak kena pilih antara satu tau. Itu yang nanti belakang hari susah. Anaknya yang jadi mangsa. The difficulty is that um, kalau dia tak ada wasiat, husband dia atau anak-anak dia tidak boleh mewarisi apa yang dia ada secara automatik kerana mereka uh, tidak dianggap uh, waris-waris faraid. Jadi that is the most telling thing that I see and uh, for those who have actually uh, kahwin civil and do, they want to do uh, estate planning or wealth planning eh most of them come to us uh, and the consequence is that the outcome eh selalunya they renounce their religion altogether after they find they find out the truth or they will do a wasiat um, then they give satu per tiga kepada ahli keluarga mereka seperti their husband and their children who are non-muslim then daripada dua per tiga tu uh, they know it will still be given to their parents atau adik-beradik yang masih muslim we live in uh, Singapore, it's a secular nation so um, and everybody has the right to profess whatever religion yang mereka nak lah jadi um, what I have been saying is to show that um, while it is easier kalau both parties are non-Muslim and both parties are Muslim because then it is quite straightforward apa yang berlaku jika lau perceraian apa yang berlaku jika lau ada kematian tapi the difficulties come uh, when salah satu daripada mereka Muslim dan salah satu bukan Muslim um, and they go through with a civil marriage of course implications uh, legal implications when it comes to divorce and death that it will, there will be something there lah. So while everybody in Singapore is free to profess their own religion, um, I think the issue really is kita perlu fikir what is it that we want to set, uh, what what kind of 
lifestyle that we want to set for our family members because bila kita uh, bernikah atau um, get married eh we surely want to have offspring kita nak ada zuriat nak ada anak jadi our lifestyle ni and what we have chosen what will be the implications for them because um, i think they will one day have to stand up and decide okay can i choose my own religion kalau anything happen to my parents and if there are no instructions left untuk anak-anak you then the difficulty is what can your children do you now have children of your own so how do you choose to raise them and instill faith basically no god no life that is the basic it's not hindu it's not muslim it's not taoism nothing it's god so we, that we talk about all races uh. yes uh, we we try to see documentaries on every single yes. uh, religion and all that sometimes and I always tell the kids to respect yeah, and, how others yes. other races are actually practicing their own you religion. can be very uh, cultured and very religious but then you don't know how to respect your elders so your I, grandmas just out of curiosity do you think that your children may feel conflicted as they grow up no one thing i can i believe i think the dad and i we, we are very open when it comes to any conversation they can sit and have a chat with us that i can assure you <laughs> definitely so were you aware of the differences between marrying through the islamic law and also the civil law oh uh, no so with the religious considerations involved what are your plans for the future and yeah i mean this is a very sensitive one and maybe for the funeral in time to come it's something that has always been at the back of my mind you know because islam you have to be married right? which i don't want but then when you talk about the religion bottom line i didn't convert but so eventually there will be a big thing so i have to get it sorted out i guess we leave it to the kids uh, to decide is there any particular reason why you don't you don't want to be buried you see as long you are alive you have the respect finish it off that's it don't expect them to come and visit you all this show respect love me while i'm alive once i'm dead no i'm also in another world we are both the same just so going to finish up to our kids or grandkids that's yeah it. it's that's it well i think up to today i never give up on the faith it's it's still in me but i'm accepting and i'm just uh believing and accepting all religion that's all i'm saying have you ever like you know found out the processes that you have to go through in one if 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 you were to ever fall out from the religion like i heard you know maybe you have to go through some counseling counseling yes uh when i when we were about to get rom um i actually called up and find out if i ever would to give up my religion what i have to go through three weeks counseling if i'm not wrong mm. then i've got to make some kind of payment and this i did tell the officer it's ridiculous you know religion was not given by you you know it was given by my family you know and i have to pay and then i have to go counseling so that is something i can never accept it. i don't want to dismiss any but it's just that if you fall in love with someone don't look at any religion fall in love with that person for whom that person is because marriage is not going to be your religion that's going to last that marriage it's both of the men and the women and of course future the children it's never the religion nothing so like i said i cut your blood you cut my blood it's all right so it's respect about individual human being give respect take respect that's all i'm actually you know, following what she says you know I, i i strongly still believe in uh connection with humans yes. you know humanity is more important to me than religion yes i guess uh for first and foremost is getting to understand the person that you're gonna try to not with you know and then you're gonna i guess the sad part about singaporeans is that we don't get to stay with our partners Uh, as often as we want to because we are still bounded to our own family culture so after we get married and we find a house then we start staying together <laughs> that's when you pick up on the bad habits and everything and then we get into arguments quarrels, culture shock comes in <laughs> so i think in that sense we have to come out from there 
uh, other than that, I think communication is the key. In terms of kita respect, but kita tak boleh also pulaukan dia. Um, menasihati itu memang penting lah secara Islam kan. Tapi you have to build connection before you correct the person. Kita kena um, eh, akur lah. Parents, mana tak, me parents pun angry juga lah. Marah kan. But uh, basically they have to take note that this is actually um, uh, life. Jangan pulaukan budak-budak, anak-anak kan. Kalau tidak nanti lagi pulau lagi lagi jauh. Uh, so if not, slowly then sikit-sikit terapkan. Then give the examples of uh, Islamic examples to them. Buat uh, solat jemaah ke apa kan. So that they can actually, the other party can see. see. Educate them, teach them, advise them, or maybe go through counselling ke, pergi arkam, I don't know, like encourage the partner lah. Maybe sebelum kahwin, orang discuss dulu sebelum nak, they want to do anything. Kita must understand lah kenapa orang kahwin. Kita boleh nasihat tapi kita tak boleh paksa orang. Itu masa depan orang kan. Kita tak punya hak penuh eh, nak mengarahkan anak kita ke mana. Eh, kenapa? Ini selain dua pihak kan. Jadi dua pihak ni mana kita harus harus fikir matang lah eh, matang. Bagaimana caranya untuk kita meneruskan kehidupan akan datang, eh, apabila berumah tangga, jadi dengan masalah-masalah ini akan timbul banyak. Eh? Apalagi mengapa cakap, kita tak tahu umur eh, umur kita. Eh. Besok lusa, salah satu dari kita tutup mata, jadi masalah besar juga. Ke mana arah tu, anak tu, eh, arahnya ke mana sekarang. Eh? Ini, ini salah satu juga fakta, eh, fakta yang eh, kita harus pertimbangkan. Lah.